Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarpin, PhD in Accounting, and our topic today is the retail inventory method, the conventional method, the average method, and LIFO. If you are here in the US, you can choose from these three methods. If you are not in, in the US, and if your country allows the retail inventory method, you cannot choose LIFO because IFRS doesn't allow LIFO, okay? So what is the retail inventory method? Used by high volume retailers selling many different items at low unit prices. For instance, grocery stores, Walmart, uh, Carrefour if you are in Europe, or uh, uh, Kruger if you are in the US and a lot of other grocery stores. What do we do first? Estimate the amount of ending inventory at retail prices. How do we do that? Goods available for sale at retail prices, less sales at retail prices. And any inventory is uh, beginning inventory plus purchase, that is the goods available for sale, less sales. Why? Because if we are, we are working at cost prices, our any inventory is goods available for sale plus purchase, less cost of goods sold. Okay, so this is the approach of our cost of goods sold formula at retail prices. And how do we go from retail to cost? We have the goods available for sale at cost, so we divide it by the cost of goods at the, the goods available for sale at retail. And we will find the cost to retail percentage that, it's, that it looks like, or other quotes here, a profit margin, a gross profit margin. Okay, go back here. And we have some terminology here that we need. Initial markup, difference between original prices and costs. Additional markup, additional uh, increase in selling price. Might now cancellation if this additional markup goes down. Or the opposite. After initial markup, we can reduce the selling price. So we have marked down. And then if we eliminate it, we have marked down cancellation. Okay. So original cost six, initial markup four, original selling price 10. Markup, additional markup, 2, 12, 1.5, cancellation. So our selling price, 1050. The same 10, 3 markdown, reduced to 7. Work, 1 markdown, cancellation goes to 8. Let's go to our Excel file. And it's easier. So the general method here. What do we have? We will not consider markups, markdowns, and so on. Let's delete it here, delete it there. Beginning inventory at cost 100. Net purchase at cost 430. Goods available for sale 530. These two first info here, but not at the cost price, but at retail prices. 140 beginning inventory 950 net purchase. How do we find our cost to retail percentage? Cost divided by retail, 48.62. If we have net sales of 868, uh, our ending inventory at retail, goods available for sale, less net sales, 222. How do we find the estimated ending inventory at cost? 222 times 48. And let's put a negative number here. It will be better for our formula. 107. So the estimated cost of goods sold, goods available for sale, less estimated ending inventory, 422. And how do we do that? So let's consider Skype Incorporation use the periodic inventory system and the retail inventory method to estimate ending inventory and cost of goods sold. 
the following data are available from the company records for the month of April. My birthday, April, by the way. So here we have our numbers. Beginning inventory and net purchase at cost and retail. Net markups, why net markups? Markup, less markup cancellation. Net markdowns, markdown, less uh, markdown cancellation. And net sales, 868. And here we have a lot of products combined here. That's why we have markups and markdowns. So how do we do that? Let's delete everything. Cost, beginning inventory, 178. Plus net purchase, 549. Goods available for sale. The sum here, that is the same formula for retail. For retail, beginning inventory plus net purchase plus markups. We don't consider the markdowns yet. So here, cost to retail percentage, the same. Cost divided by retail, 56. And then net markdowns, less net markdowns. Remember, markdowns when price goes down. And now a second goods available for sale, including markdowns. So 1 million to 80 less 16. Less net sales, net sales 868. And the estimated any inventory at retail, 1.2 million less net sales. So 396. Estimated any inventory at cost, just like the general method here. At retail times 56. So it is 225. And the estimated cost of goods sold. Goods available for sale, less ending inventory. So 502, a little bit more than $500,000. And we have the average method. What is the greatest difference? We consider the markdown before the cost to retail percentage. So we have the same here for cost, the same here for cost. Retail, the same. However, the markdown goes here. And we have a different cost to retail percentage, 728 divided by now, 1.264. Uh, 57, a little bit higher than the conventional. Why? Because our goods available for sale uh, at retail is a little bit lower because we are considering the markdown. So our denominator is lower, our number is higher. And last net sales, estimated any inventory at retail, exactly the same. Any inventory at cost, any inventory at retail times cost to retail, so it's a little bit higher. So our any inventory will be a little bit Higher. And the cost of goods sold will be a little bit lower. So a little bit less than $500,000. So if you are not in the US, it, it, it stops here. Subscribe our channel, guys. However, if you are in the US, let's follow. And if you are not in the US, but you want to learn how to do it based on LIFO, let's do it. LIFO assumes that unit sold most recently uh, acquired. So we sold the units most recently acquired. So when there is a net increase in inventory quantity, how much will be the ending inventory of LIFO? The beginning inventory plus one layer plus this additional increase. When there is net decrease, LIFO layers are liquidated. So we don't have it anymore. And we assume retail prices of goods remain stable during the period. Okay. So we compare beginning and ending inventory in dollars to determine if quantity has increased or decreased. 
that is what we will be doing here. So we have the same numbers here. We have the same numbers uh, as our average. So same numbers here. Now we have two goods available for sale. The first one, including beginning inventory. That is the same of average. And the second one, only the goods available for sale of April, because we don't consider beginning inventory. This is the increasing in our beginning inventory. So we have two cost retail percentage. Beginning inventory, this number is a little bit useless. We will check it later. That is beginning inventory at cost divided by beginning inventory at Detail 55 and then the April April layer that is the goods available for sale, excluding beginning inventory. This is the net purchase of April, net markups of April, net markdowns of April. So, what do we have here? This is how we find the 58. Net sales, estimated and inventory at retail, exact the same numbers as the other ones. Okay. What about the any inventory at cost? Remember, life for our any inventory increases. So we haven't sold the beginning inventory. So the beginning inventory, what do we do? Oops. How do we do this? Beginning inventory, beginning inventory at retail, 320, at cost, 178. How, oh, another way to find this beginning inventory at cost, at retail times 55. That is why we have this 55, only to make sure our numbers are right. Current period layer at cost, current period layer at retail, times the April cost to retail percentage. However, we don't find this current period layer at retail. However, we have the total inventory. And the total inventory at cost is the sum of these two numbers here. How do we find the current period layer? The total is retail plus layer. So the only way to or the only number that we have it, it, it here to make this account balance it is any inventory less beginning inventory it is 76 because 320 plus 76 equal to 396 and then at at plus 76 plus at times 58 44 now, total 222. Remember, on LIFO, usually we have the uh, we have the lowest ending inventory. That is here our 222. Let's double check it. 228. Very good. Conventional 225. Very good. So LIFO usually is the lowest ending inventory. If it is the lowest ending ending inventory will be the highest cost of goods sold. So what's available for sale, including beginning inventory plus ending or less any inventory or plus a negative any inventory. 505, it is the highest cost of goods sold. It's higher than 499, higher than 502. Hey guys, so life a little bit more complicated, but we only need to split it in beginning inventory and layers. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Subscribe our channel, like this video, like our Facebook page, Accounting Hub by Dr. Scarping. If you have questions or comments, leave it here or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. Have a very nice day and God bless you.